Well, I finally got round to assembling a really good strong machine tool stand for my Myford ML7. The old one wasn't strong enough and I was getting a lot of vibration. And I had a machine tool stand which I bought some years ago. Good heavy cast iron stand um, with a British maker's name on each end. Um, it's very heavy and it's exactly 34 inches in height so it's absolutely ideal for this um, lathe stand also from my local recycle center i bought a nice heavy piece of wood it was an old table and it's over an inch thick and um, it's one piece so it's very strong and ideal for this bench also i bought a myford deep um, drip tray on eBay. I think it came off of a Myford Super 7 and it has the facility for coolant. So in this video I'm going to show you uh, why it is so important to use these proper Myford raising blocks to get the machine set up correctly and also show you how to seal the bolt holes and get the machine ready for coolant. But before I do that, I must quickly respray this tray. So I've given the tray about three coats of cellulose paint, and um, these blocks I bought some time ago from RDG on eBay, and they come with a rubber seal um, O ring in the top there to stop the swarf and um, coolant going down the bolt. Um, but they really need one in the underside there's a recess on the underside and I put um, a very thin o-ring in there and then a rubber seal that I found and when it goes in there like that it's got about um, 20 thou protruding from this face here and when that goes down onto the tray and it's bolted down that'll be enough um, squeeze on that rubber to stop any coolant from seeping under here and going down the thread and when I put it onto the tray to stop those rubber seals from falling out um, I will put some silicon grease around there and around this face Also, when you buy the blocks, they haven't got any of this studding in. You have to buy that separately. And it's 5 16th BSF. So I've just put the silicon grease around there, and that will stop those O-rings falling out. And it will also protect this um, face of the cast iron and stop it from corroding. On the um, headstock end, I've got the um, studding bolts and, and they go right the way through the actual um, cast iron stand. But on the other end, it doesn't go through the stand, so I've got these um, 10 millimeter thick mild steel um, plates or bar ends and they will go on the underside of the wood and then the nuts will lock up on those. And I've left the block slightly loose until the lathe goes on there and then I'll tighten the underside nuts up. Um, the jacking screws need to be screwed right the way down um, to start with and um, you use a 15mm spanner to do that. And you need at least 30mm of thread um, protruding from the top. So now I've put the lathe on. I didn't show you that bit because it's such a struggle to lift it. I can only just lift it um, and that's after taking the motor and the guard off at the back and the tailstock. So now I've tightened up the nuts on the underside of the bench and I'm about to perform the first of two very important tests to do on the Myford. To complete this test you need a piece of bar like this, this is 3 quarter inch silver steel and just put it into the jaws and you have it sticking out by about 8 inches. 
it doesn't matter about concentricity in the jaws next you need a DTI clock set in the tool post I've got mine in my tool post vise so it's made it easier for me to get it on center or on center height and then next you just zero that clock on the diameter Now I've tightened the nuts at the headstock end to hold the lathe onto the um, lifting blocks and the bench so they're nice and tight and I've um, tightened the one at the back which is nearest to me. The one at the very back hasn't been tightened down fully yet. So now I'm going to tighten down the back nut and while I'm doing that just observe the DTI and you can see that I'm getting a good 3 thou movement there every time I tighten it up and this gives an indication that the lathe is not being tightened down exactly level you can see that movement on the clock there clearly. So to correct that twist in the lathe and to get the lathe dead level I've got to adjust the jacking screw at the rear. And to do that I use a 15mm spanner which has been thinned down on the grinding wheel and that is because it's got to go in between the raising block and the base of the lathe which is very narrow and just to show you that on the front of the lathe the spanner goes in here to adjust the jacking screws so I loosen off the top nut and turn the jacking screw um, anti-clockwise by about half a turn so now I tighten down the nut at the top loosen it off and tighten it up and you can see now that I've only got about a thou movement and it is possible to get it dead zero when you're doing that so all nuts tight and dead zero on the clock when you're tightening the last one up but like I say this is only a rough indication and um, I have done this test before on the lathe uh, when I had it on my other bench and then when I came to do the other test which I'll show in a minute I had six thou run on the lathe so I had to readjust the uh, jacking screw to get that correct and this is why these tests are so important because the lathe could be badly twisted or even twisted a few thou and if that's left um, what you'll get is a nasty taper on any turning I think many people believe that um, you buy a MyFord and you can just plonk it on a bench, tighten it up and away you go. Well you can do that but you won't get any real precision work over a length of bar. And there's a possibility as well that if the twist is quite bad you'll get a taper over short turns and bores. So now I'm going to do the critical test on the lathe and see whether the lathe has got a taper from end to end on here or over this length of bar. It's a piece of mild steel as near to an inch as you can get and you have it um, sticking out about four inches and it's been relieved in the middle and then I'm going to take a couple of thou cut over this end and this end and then measure the taper. So when you do this test you mustn't use the tail stock and you bring the tool in, touch on and then take a two thou cut.
so the front end is 974 thou and the back end is 969 thou so I have a 5 thou taper over the length so to correct that I've got to adjust that jacking screw that I've um, just altered and screw it back the other way so clockwise and go down a little bit and that will effectively twist the bed over a little bit and pull the tool into this front end and should remove the taper so loosen off the top nut again and move the jacking screw clockwise to go down and then tighten up the top nut nice and tight then I must re-skim again incidentally when you skim this uh, diameter and this diameter you must leave the tool in exactly the same position over the full length of the cut So now this front end is 968 and the back end is 964.5 so it needs to go a bit more. So loosen off the top nut again and move the jacking screw a bit more clockwise about a quarter of a turn and then tighten down the locking nut on the top and then take another skin So now the front end is 963 and the back end is 962.5 so it needs a fraction more. So loosen off that top nut. and just turn the jacking screw clockwise just a fraction and then re-tighten the nut like that and then do another re-skim
and I did it a couple more times to get it right and now this end the front end is 948 and the back end is 948 so it's absolutely spot on and there's no taper over that length so that has very effectively taken the twist out of the lathe bed and got everything spot on. So obviously if the diameter test at the front is smaller than the back you'd have to do it the other way or adjust the front jacking screw. So now I hope you can see how important it is to do this test. This is the critical one, like I said, and both of these tests are mentioned in the MyFit ML7 and the Super 7 handbooks. So now my lathe is all set up and ready to go again, and I'm ever so pleased with it. Um, it's rock solid, there's no movement at all in it, and also it's now at the correct height my last bench was two inches too high and like I say this one's at 34 inches at the top of the table which is um, the recommended height for the average person in the MyFood ML7 handbooks I hope you enjoyed the video and saw the importance of these tests and um, in a future video I hope to set up the coolant system